Now a few things have happened to this Unit N 2020 since the last video. Um, where do we start? Uh, I was successful with the spaces for the plug-in circuit boards so that they located properly in the sockets. So the radio was reassembled and it, um, it was working well except for one uh, small problem which I'll come back to and that's why the preamp board is out at the moment. It was even working so well that I got the transmitter tuned up and it was working uh, quite okay putting out the rated power and I got onto the 80 meter band and had a few contacts and got some very good reports. So all was looking really well. The receiver was performing, performing very well. The transmitter was tuning up properly, performing well, getting good audio reports. So what was the snag? Well, the snag was when I got off 80 meters, very strange things were happening. Um, the sensitivity of the radio was dropping considerably and um, I was starting to pick up stations around the IF frequency, which should be isolated by this preamp board. So I thought I would investigate and as I said this radio is second hand so I don't know the um, complete history of it at all. The fellow who owned it was a good friend of mine but as he's passed away I can't ask him uh, to tell me what, what's happened to it so it's a, it's a bit of a voyage of discovery. Anyway when I first looked under here you might be able to see that that's the um, input from the aerial actually it's the input also from the um, marker generator and it's got a coil and capacitor on it so I've got a tuned circuit there and that's very strange because there's multiple frequencies going through that so why would you have a tuned circuit to only select one frequency and then you look on the board itself and you see this little piece of wire this little bridge coming across from one of the moving contacts of the switch to one of the fixed contacts and that fixed contact just happens to be on the 80 meter band so the result of that is that the um, this section, this wafer of the switch is permanently selected on the 80 meter band so why would you want to do that? So then you start looking very closely at the board and I'm going to have to give you a close up when I repair these but there's two wafers on this board as you can see there are three but there are two wafers the center one and the rear one which um, aren't really doing anything at the moment and the reason they're not doing anything is the wiping contacts of which there are two one there and one underneath so you've got one there and one underneath they're up in the air they're not contacting the moving part of the wafer of the switch at all now how they got to that condition, why they're lifted up, how you would catch them, accidentally bump them, damage them or whatever, I'm blowed if I know. But somehow these contacts have been lifted up in the air, unless it was intentional. Um, and so these two parts of the switches aren't doing anything at all. This part's okay, they're the two wiping contacts there, they're fine. So that's working alright. And um, that's the output of the um, so this is the RF preamp and it's also the beginning the, the the first mixing stage so it feeds into the IF stage after this so the output to the IF stage is fine through that wafer but certainly the RF preamp isn't doing anything except on 80 meters and I think this tune circuit over here which I was showing you before plus this bridge here means that it was working on 80 meters but it wasn't really working at all on the other ones. Of course the transmitter will work on the other bands because it's got nothing to do with this board but the receiver won't. So what I've got to do, now also too on this uh, center wafer that contact there, the fixed contact which gets contacted as this goes around um, that's up in the air as well so that one's been bent up too. So I don't really know why all this has happened, whether it's been done intentionally because of some other problem it's quite strange. Um, underneath the board um, that's the the output FET 
and that's that's sitting underneath the board so there's been a problem with the circuit tracks there uh, or, or it's been replaced and there's been a problem getting contact so instead of putting it back in the top side of the board they've got to put it underneath instead so that's another interesting interesting problem that it's got yeah, everything else was working on it properly um, all the variable capacitors turn nicely and they, they're coupled through a very interesting mechanism and chains and in some of these radios the nylon in the gears and indeed the sprockets of the chain drive that drives all these gang switches uh, cracks and falls apart well it has cracked in this one but it hasn't fallen apart they're still holding firmly so I suppose one day just like the switches in this radio I'm going to have to replace those and um, because they're not going to be gripping too well but for the moment touch wood they're okay and there's a, a fellow with a website who covers the replacement of these quite comprehensively and um, I can put a, um, a link to that later on when I'm getting to the uh, stage of finishing these I'll make another video with some close-ups if I can of uh, fixing these contacts on the wafers and how to do it but uh, just broadly speaking what it requires is putting uh, th this would be with jeweler screwdrivers uh, a small screwdriver underneath the center of the contact and then bending the end uh, lifting it up a little bit and then bending this end of the contact back down so as to put a, a curve in the contact again which will give it some spring which would get it to contact the, the moving part so if, if that works I'll show some of that going and um, then we'll put the board back in and then I'll show you hopefully the whole thing working properly and then um, tuning up of the transmitter and maybe some contacts and then I can I can use it on more than one band but I can tell you that even on the 80 meter band the way this is set up at the moment with these it was working really well and um, they're a very nice transceiver I can see why people have got a lot of accolades for them when they were in their heyday in uh, about 1976 onwards and the only criticism I've, I've heard about them is not so much about these nylon parts cracking up and then in the plastic for the sockets I showed you in the earlier videos but the, the criticism is more that they're an old style radio well you know the best the, as long as it does what it's designed to do and it does it within its specifications that's all it can do I don't think it's fair to criticize something saying that it's um, you know 40 year old technology or something because that's all it ever will be um, it's the same as people who restore cars that may be 30 40 50 60 70 years old um, if they restore them authentically the best the car can do is perform the way it did at the time it was designed and in all my repairs and um, uh, in, in some cases uh, if I'm doing a mantle radio or something uh, recapping it and doing a lot of work rewiring so it's an overhaul I try and get the, the radio whatever the um, device is to try and function perform the way it was meant to originally and I think if I can do that I'm very happy because that's the way it was intended for it to be and um, that's why I don't think it's fair to criticize it for performing the way that it was designed to perform anyhow uh, enough raving for me for the moment I'll uh, get into the um, toolbox and find the right tools to modify these uh, wafers to try and get the contacts working again and I'll try and show you some of that very close up bye for now